Hey, so it's Gaz here from Month Couture. Right, so like I mentioned in the last video, what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and stop just before I do an air process to show you actually how I'm doing it, rather than just steamrolling ahead and then going back to it. And this is how I've done it, right? So like I mentioned before, just a quick recap. This is the side that I've already done of this desk, aviator style desk. That's going to match the aviator bed, which goes with the theme of that old fashioned retro aviator egg chair. Right, this side. So I've cut me metal, like I was showing you before. I showed you how to fold it, you know, like on this uh, edge here. So we've got like a nice bead going up there. So it's nice and smooth. Yeah. Obviously this side, it's just cut, but uh, with me snips. When you do metal work, right? I noticed what I was doing was I was trying to make use with the tools I had. Making use with the tools that you've got is uh, great in most aspects of life. But things are going to take you longer, always going to take you longer. So really you need to get the right tool for the job. There's always going to be a right tool for the job. Sure, you could hammer in a nail with a brick, but it's never going to go in where you want it and the brick's going to smash and all this type of crap. So you need to get a hammer, you know what I mean? Just get the right tool for the job. But being skinned, you try and adapt and you try and use other things. Sometimes you've just got to, you know, open that purse and, and sort of bite the bullet and do it. Anyway, going back to what we're saying. Right, so what I've done is I've secured the metal in place where I wanted it, right? In line with my lines. I've done my fold. Once I've secured this, I've bent it down to be fold to secure that. Now what I'm left with is curving this round. It's hard to try and show you. Curve it round so we can finish the metal, right? We don't want any raw metal on, on like, protruding like that because it's going to catch yourself on it and it's going to be fucking dangerous isn't it so and plus it looks shit so let's do it properly right now rather than just curving it around and bashing the metal to sort of try and conceal it what we do is we'll put nice cuts in so i'll just show you here this is one i've already done i've removed this section here right which is like a triangle and what it means is it allows for when i fold the metal down See that metal, the, the sort of line there, the mitre joint, right? That will meet up with this mitre joint. And the way that we work out these mitres is this. When that was like sort of a piece of metal in there, right? This is how I worked it out. And other people might have different ways. But say that was in there like that, yeah? What it did was I measured from the, the corner here. <laughs> it's hard this trying to do this, Christ. From the very corner of the triangle there, the tip of the triangle, I measured the distance from that to this edge bit here by my thumb, right? That straight line. I measured that, right? That ended up being three inches. No, it wasn't three inches. Christ, what was it? Doesn't matter. Fuck it. But the distance that was, I then used from the center of the base of that triangle all the way out to the edge there of the triangle. That was the same. Likewise, on the other side. Then I matched them up. I drew the lines from that measurement all the way at the, co the, the top corner there and then down. Cut them out with my snips, nice and neat. And sure enough, when you fold it, they meet up nice and neat, right? I'll show you on the other side. It's riveted in place. There you go, nice and neat. What I'm gonna do now is, I've obviously done that. I'm gonna show you how I did it on this one. So you'll see on the bottom here, where the, the, the desk front edge finishes, I need to fold this metal around. Can't just fold it around, because I'll end up with excess metal there. So what I need to do is, I need to cut out another triangle here. So I'm going to try and prop this bloody camera up somewhere. Use my box of rivets here. I'm going to try and prop that up so I'll show you exactly what I'm doing. Right. Some of you might be interested, some of you not. I don't my glove back on because I keep bloody cutting myself. Right. So like I said, the piece there, the top of the triangle, which will well, become the top of the triangle, I measure that to the bottom. Mr. Centimeters, because he's moving us here. Right, so where we are. That is. Well, it's two centimeters. So I know it's two centimeters. So now I measure from the base of that out two centimeters. Bert Lang. Here's that way. Join them up. Now join them up. Here we go. Easy. 
he's got the right idea. Some geezers just went up the lane on a like a little bobber, cool as out. But massive ear panger handlebars. How awesome, how cool. Right. Get me snips. And just cut. Nice up to that tip of the triangle. I'll come on the other side for this one. Again, from the base, up to the tip of the triangle. Nice straight cut. Let's twist that off. Right, now, you can see, you can see from there, a nice triangle piece missing out there. When I fold this, and I fold that like that, you'll see how it marries up, right? Obviously that'll nip up together when I bash it with my hammer, you know, and that'll be nice and neat finished there. That'll fold up nice and tight. So I'll hide a couple of rivets in there and that'll be that aspect done, right? I'll finish that on all the way up. So, very quick today. Um, next video that you'll see will be this all finished. I'll brand the front, clearly on the front edge here. It's gonna be branded Moth Couture, obviously. Uh, once I've done that, I'll give it all a beeswax. And uh, yeah, until next time, take care. Bye-bye.